So what we saw last year as a school was closing, there's this large fear about cheating. And I would argue that cheating existed before ChatGPT. So yes, this is a shortcut tool for kids. But when I interviewed them and asked them about what they liked about it, they said things like, it's faster than Google. I have a tutor now. I can get answers when my teacher isn't available. So there are things that kids are seeing not as a way to go cheat because these are students that want to do best as learners. So we have to separate it. It's not just a tool for cheating. It's a tool that can enable a lot of really positive growth. You're listening to the SmartSocial.com podcast. I'm your host, Josh Oates. This is our district talk segment where we interview district leaders to learn how they're keeping students safe on social media so those students can someday shine online. Now, let's get back to the interview. I'm Alan Musarino, Superintendent of Schools for the Albert Unified School District. We serve Eastern Corona and Western Riverside in the county of Riverside in 23 schools with approximately 18,000 students. Hey everyone, I'm Jamie Lusader. I am the Associate Superintendent of Technology Services here in La Cunada Unified. If you know where the Rose Bowl is, you can center yourself to our school district. We have just under 4,000 students and we have four schools, three elementaries and a 712 high school, uh, high school and middle school campus. Hi, I'm April Grace and I'm the superintendent of Shawnee Public Schools in Oklahoma. We're about 30 miles east of Oklahoma City. We've got about 34, 3,500 students across eight school sites. Excited to be here. With regards to AI tools, how is your school district approaching those tools, especially ChatGPT? When I gave my graduation speech last May to our students, I opened with my process that that I traditionally use. I start about a month prior to graduation. I begin with an idea and then one iteration after another. Uh, one idea leads to the next and eventually I have my speech. So this year, the Sunday before the week of graduation, uh, for no good reason really, or one that I could think of, I'm embarrassed to say, I went ahead and I put my theme into chat GPT and I said, write a speech for graduation in my theme. And, um, and it came up with something eerily similar to what I had written. Uh, and I, and of course they got a big laugh from the, the students who appreciated it. Um, so I ripped it up because if chat GPT could do it, then then that's that's not me that you're not getting my words and and my my time so i'm just going to tell you guys a story instead uh which i then then did for the next minute or so um chat gpt uh is so incredible uh i use it for all kinds of stuff uh we're encouraging our staff our teachers to utilize it as a way for students to compare their work, to put in an idea and see what it comes up with, see how close it is to what you had written. There, people will cheat. They, they always have. This is just a new way to cheat. So I don't see this as a threat. And, and I'm sure we have some teachers who uh, are somewhat fearful uh, of it, but it's not really just, it's not only for writing either, obviously can answer a lot of other types of questions. And it's another great opportunity to check sources out and teach about that. Uh, so, so our, our goal here is to help students to use it effectively because it is a powerful, powerful tool that if they are not aware of and understand how to use effectively, uh, then they will likely um, end up not taking advantage of what is a otherwise incredible tool. With AI on the rise, and it's something that everybody is worried about and wondering about, there's a lot of curiosity, there's a lot of fear. Our district is taking probably the measured approach where we didn't start by blocking it. We started by having conversations. The, the natural reaction is is, again, get rid of the tech that's causing the problem. So we are proposing that we will form an emerging technology council, and this is going to feature parents, students, teachers, educators, and we're going to spend time talking about what this means to our school, what it means to education, and have kind of a live monitoring tool in place to watch this evolve. So what we saw last year as a school was closing, 
there's this large fear about cheating. And I would argue that cheating existed before ChatGPT. So yes, this is a shortcut tool for kids. But when I interviewed them and asked them about what they liked about it, they said things like, it's faster than Google. I have a tutor now. I can get answers when my teacher isn't available. So there are things that kids are seeing not as a way to go cheat because these are students that want to do best as learners. So we have to separate it. It's not just a tool for cheating. It's a tool that can enable a lot of really positive growth. And so that's what we're doing as a school district. The second thing we're doing in just two weeks is I'm going to meet with all of our high school teachers. I have two samples of syllabus language for them. One has a permissive tone. One has a restrictive tone. And I'm going to ask all the departments to decide which one they're going to do uniformly. But we're adding an asterisk to the policy. It's going to say that in January, we're going to reevaluate. So we are not setting policy for the entire year. We're setting ourselves up for three months of experimentation. Then we're going to regroup and adjust the policy. So that way, everybody starts off with something that they feel comfortable with, knowing that we are going to iterate. Well, Josh, right now with the AI tools, I think all of us are really trying to learn about it, right? So we're trying to open the dialogue with our teachers, say what's reasonable, um, how do we leverage this in a positive way? There are ways to use chat GPT in a positive way, but how do we teach students how to think about this differently? And for teachers, maybe it's a way to work smarter, not harder on some things. Maybe it can help create um, objectives or, you know, points about a particular topic. So, you know, I think it's just being open-minded. Um, it's here, it's here to stay. I don't think it's going anywhere. So I do think we have to have dialogue around it. We have to talk about parameters that make it safe and usable. Um, and how do we leverage the tool in a great way? So the next question I have for you is, are there any positive use cases that you've heard from students or teachers around ChatGPT? So in our district, we had a few teachers explore ChatGPT last semester and really see what, it, what its power was about. So one of the teachers decided to use ChatGPT to help with grading. So half of the papers were graded by ChatGPT, half of them were graded by her. The kids were then asked to see if they could tell the difference, and they couldn't. So that was remarkable. But what we discovered was this was a tool that could give teachers time back. If they use this tool as a way to get, you know, maybe those surface level issues corrected or just to give guidance to the students, teachers want to write a lot more feedback and they don't often have the time. So that's going to be our approach. How can we use this tool to help teachers gain time to give back to the kids? And I think that's going to be really powerful. Oh, that's amazing. So basically running the essay through chat GPT to say, please grade this with an eighth grader in mind. I want you to I want you to look for spelling errors, grammar errors, um, structure and provide positive, constructive feedback all in that prompt. Is that kind of what you're thinking? Exactly. Yeah. And so one of the ways I used it recently myself, my niece is in a college. She was writing her essay for freshman English. I had a lot of homework to do myself and she asked me if I could review her essay. So I threw it in a chat GPT and I said, act as a, a college freshman professor. Tell me three things this paper needs. I looked at it. I picked one of the three things and that's what we worked on for the next hour. So rather than taking the time to spend and read, and I obviously could have come to the same conclusions that came in three seconds. I would have taken me about 10 minutes. And then we had beautiful topic sentences, concluding sentences, all of that fixed. So using chat GPT to again, find this, find the problem. And then I, I, with a human effort at the end. So it was amazing. I've heard from, from both teachers and students that uh, it has been in a very effective way to help them to get started. Students have told me sometimes they just, they just don't know how to get started. It's not unusual in the writing process, but once you get started, now you could build on that. Um, after I told my story at graduation, uh, many shared something similar. Uh, and it's like comparing notes. It's, it's like a peer. And we've always used pair shares and let exchange papers. You read his essay, you read hers. And it's really a way of doing it. Uh, but like anything else, if it's abused, it's not going to be a positive or have positive results. So yeah, I don't see it as, as any, as different than any other technological tool. I really don't use it for good and it could be incredibly powerful use it for bad and yeah you may never learn to write on your own well there are a number of software companies out there that have some great ai um tools that you know obviously you can purchase beyond these open free platforms that actually will help 
great a math problem and students can work inside an AI program and it shows their work and a teacher can grade all of that online and it'll it'll grade like the basic aspect, but then the teacher can just look at the process. So I think there are a number of tools out there that can be really helpful. With ChatGPT, I've seen teachers that are using it to help create parts of a lesson plan or get generate ideas or maybe question prompts over a particular topic. So, you know, I think really it's, we're all still really new at this and I think there's just so much room for growth, but I do think there are some positive opportunities for, uh, for teachers to use this and leverage it. And I think we have to make sure that we're being protective too. So students can't shortcut and do no learning and just use it as a way to, you know, cheat versus enhance their, their product that they're providing. Same thing with teachers or adults. With regards to AI tools like ChatGPT, are you changing any of your techniques for grading students and the types of assignments being used in the classroom? One of the things I've noticed with the recent tools that are coming out, um, there are quite a few things where three months ago, we were worried about how do we write better prompts. It might even have been three weeks ago, how do we write better prompts? Now there are tools that are coming out with the prompts written for us. So what I've seen that are going to be just like amazing for teachers is that teachers spend a lot of time writing questions. And now we can use AI. So the teacher puts in a correct answer and AI can put in a three wrong answers. So again, this, this changes the workflow for the teacher. Um, so I think grading can be something where they're spending time with the follow-up conversations, not that first round of grading where you have to pull all the surface errors out. You get to spend time going deeper. So that's what I think is like the huge advantage here. I remember I was an English teacher before I moved to tech. I would spend hours breaking my heart, like pouring into writing comments that kids didn't read. But again, what if we reframed it that the robot helped us find the three common errors or the two common errors, then I could group those kids together and do workshops with them. So using AI to kind of sort and gather the data for me, I think will be a powerful way that we change things. But here's the concern. I know that parents will fear that we're outsourcing the work of the teacher. And I think that's a stigma we have to break down. We are already okay with teachers going to Google, going to conferences, finding other humans who have answers. We should be okay with this as well. And I think that's something we have to be mindful of. Uh, before we judge the teachers and say that they're taking shortcuts as much as we're worrying about worrying about the kids doing that, that's not the case. They're working smarter so they can spend more time with the kids. We have not uh, drafted any policy regarding that yet, but we do have a group together here that's working on that. Uh, and our uh, education technology specialist uh, is is working with, teachers and and others uh, around that concept uh, as of now though we we have not changed any policies because of chat gpt you know i think um the most concern that you hear people talk about a lot with you know changes are how do we um, redefine what makes sense what's really cheating and what's just leveraging resources again, to do something. So I think, you know, English teachers certainly will be looking at this. How do they, um, you know, make sure that students are doing authentic work? But we also know that there's not a whole lot new under the sun either. And so it's making sure that we're teaching students the proper way to use it. And our, our teachers will continue to sort of evaluate that process and look at what makes sense. You know, people have used Turnitin and all those things to to catch, you know, plagiarism and stuff before. So I think now it's just, you know, revisiting what does make sense and sort of like cell phones in the classroom. Uh, how do we leverage the use of them in a positive way? Because we knew kids were going to be bringing them all the time. How do we keep them from being a disruption to the learning environment? Same thing with chat, GPT and other AI tools. How do we keep it from being a disruption and find positive ways to leverage it for learning? Thanks for listening to our smartsocial.com podcast. I'm your host, Josh Oaks. This was our district talk segment where we interview school district leaders to learn how they're keeping students safe on social media so those students can someday launch into their future by shining online. This episode was brought to you by our smartsocial.com VIP program. It's called the Very Informed Parent Program, which helps you engage your students with teen-led video lessons. Stay one step ahead with our premium parent newsletter and discover hidden features on trending apps on teens' phones and our 54 plus live parent and student friendly events every single year. You can click on the link below to chat with one of our team members if you want a free pass to our VIP program to support your community with our smartsocial.com resources. 
And if you're a district leader who has a success story, we would love to feature you on a future episode. You can click the links below to reach out. Thanks so much for listening. And we look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Have a great day.